peace is a lie. There is only passion. Through passion, I gain strength. Through strength, I gain power. Through power, I gain victory. Through victory, my chains are broken. The Force shall free me. The Sith most famous and prominent of all dark side factions throughout the galaxy. Bill is the main and most dangerous antagonist in the Star Wars universe. But are the Sith simply the one-dimensional villains we are led to believe they are? Is it as simple as Jedi good, Sith evil? Just what exactly is the driving philosophy behind these mysterious, lethal, and powerful practitioners of the dark side of the Force? Now before we dive any deeper, I must make a disclaimer that what I'm about to divulge is simply a thesis, mostly based on personal interpretation of events, characters, and motivations within George Lucas' seminal creation. In short, this is just my opinion, nothing more. Feel free to disagree all you want. Being a devoted and enthusiastic fan of Star Wars ever since I was a child, the one thing that drew me into this fascinating and engaging story from the very beginning was the Order of the Sith. I found myself completely enthralled with these so-called villains. They seemed powerful, fierce, majestic, mysterious, and absolutely badass in nearly all aspects. As a child growing up, it seemed to me that the Sith commanded respect wherever they went and were completely unapologetic for it. They were who they were, and anything they went after, they got. Sith Lords didn't give a damn what anyone thought about them, and they carved their own path in life, literally masters of their own destinies. Now this was a quality that seemed the most attractive to me. In short, I wanted to be a Sith Lord, and this is essentially what my thesis centers around. In my view, the Sith are not about tyrannical power or the suffering of others just for the sake of it. The core tenet of the Sith philosophy is self-reliance, and this philosophy surprisingly ties into a very real-world life view. I'm going to attempt to lay out a case that the Sith Code is almost parallel with modern-day conservatism. Again, I must make a disclaimer here. Some of you may get the impression that in trying to link the philosophy of the Star Wars villains to conservative thinking, that I'm somehow trying to denigrate conservatives or make conservatives out to be the bad guys. But that's far from the case, as I myself identify as a modern-day conservative in America. But as I go on, you'll start to see the common parallels shared by both these ideologies, and that in effect brings me to one of the original questions that I posed. Are the Sith truly evil? Well, I would argue no. Let's begin with this statement by none other than Darth Sidious himself. Good as a point of view, Anakin. The Sith and the Jedi are similar in almost every way, including their quest for greater power. The Sith rely on their passion for their strength. They think inwards only about themselves. And the Jedi don't. The Jedi are selfless. They only care about others. Do you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the White? No. I thought not. It's another story the Jedi would tell you. It's a Sith legend. Darth Plagueis was a dark lord of the Sith, so powerful and so wise, he could use the Force to influence the midi-chlorians to create life. He had such a knowledge of the dark side, he could even keep the ones he cared about from dying. He could actually save people from death. The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. What happened to him? He became so powerful. The only thing he was afraid of was losing his power, which eventually, of course, he did. Unfortunately, he taught his apprentice everything he knew. Then his apprentice killed him in his sleep. It's ironic. He 
can save others from death, but not himself. Is it possible to learn this power? Not from a Jedi. Let's examine that statement for a moment. That the dark side is a pathway to things considered to be unnatural. But what if I told you that it was the Jedi that were unnatural, not the Sith? Now don't get me wrong, the Sith are 100% predatory, however, they are predators in a way that nature intended predators to be, and that the Jedi are also predators, but that their style of predation is completely antithetical to nature, making them wholly unnatural. Now what do I mean by this? Well think about it for a second. The Sith operate on the Darwinian principles of survival of the fittest, that the strong have dominion over the weak as nature intends life to be. It's not meant to be pretty or appealing, however, it is the natural order of things. Take a lioness that has given birth to a litter of four cubs. Three of those cubs are healthy, vibrant, and assertive. However, the fourth cub is smaller, weaker, and more timid than the others. It's going to have a much more difficult time out in the wild. Nature dictates that the lioness will recognize this undesirable quality in the fourth cub and will most likely abandon that cub since it has much less viable chance to survive. She will focus her energies on the other three since they seem to have the qualities to ensure their survival thus propagating those strong genes to future generations and ensuring the continuation of the species as a whole. This very much aligns with the nature of the Sith that those who are too weak to fend for themselves were never meant to survive in the first place and that might literally makes right. This very much falls in line with modern conservative thinking. Those who are going to survive in a harsh world must do so on their own merits. Think about the lioness with her three remaining cubs. She simply doesn't throw them to the world from the moment they're born. They must be taught the skills to build up their strengths in order to become a formidable force to make their own way in the world. Now I'm not saying that conservatives simply abandon weak children. What I'm saying is that the core tenet of conservative thinking is that the children must be taught the skills to grant them the strengths they are going to need to survive to be self-made individuals. Now this is further bolstered by the very first line in the Sith Code. Peace is a lie, there is only passion. Again this falls in line with modern conservatism. In traditional conservative households, it is taught that the world upon birth is a harsh and brutal place and if you're going to survive, you needn't be naive to its many dangers. This is very much a natural way of thinking. What do all specimens in the animal kingdom do from the very moment that they're born? They are guarded fiercely by their parents, protected at all costs from the myriad of dangers that surround them. Conservatives, much like the Sith, form their passions from early on and build upon those passions, whatever they may be. They know that in order to gain strength, they must put in the work to develop those passions to strengthen them if they are to build upon those aspirations. They know that no one is going to do the work for them, and they must do it themselves. This is where the auspice of individualism also takes root. Think about how the Sith are often seen as selfish, always looking inward. Now, a degree of selfishness is not necessarily a bad thing. It is often said that for one to do right by others, they must first do right by themselves, otherwise they're no good to anyone. Let's contrast this with some core tenets of how the Jedi think in a broader sense, going back to the scenario of the lioness and her cubs. Instead of focusing on the three healthy cubs, the Jedi philosophy would instead have the mother ignore her three cubs because they theoretically wouldn't need any help and she is to focus solely on the weaker cub. This is arguably a very leftist way of operating. Instead of teaching the cub how to survive, the mother would instead spend all of her time coddling the weaker offspring, tending to all its needs and never giving it a chance to learn for itself, in effect keeping it in a state of total dependence. This is exactly what the Jedi do in some aspect. This is what is meant by saying that the Jedi are unnatural predators, in effect disguising their predation as altruism. Keeping their subjects weak and unable to fend for themselves should the Jedi ever be removed from the picture, which is arguably just as sinister as the cub being straight up eaten by another animal. Now of course there is always nuance, and I'm not saying that all Jedi believe to be this to be the case, or that this is even the intended goal, nor am I saying that compassion or selfless acts are ultimately detrimental. I am saying that in a broad general sense, 
these are the underlying things that have the most probability. There are, of course, exceptions to every rule, and likewise, rules to every exception. Let's also examine the Jedi stance of passion or really emotions of any kind. To simply cut oneself off from all emotional ties is quite frankly unrealistic and against nature as stated before. Now of course we must examine the nuance. Jedi teachings highlight that emotional attachments can leave one vulnerable. Take the case of Darth Malgus. He believed that his emotional attachments to his twilight lover Alina made him vulnerable and thus killed her to eliminate any weakness within himself. It could be said that Malgus adopted a very Jedi-like tenet, albeit to a much more brutal extreme. But here again, we find that the Sith cannot be called truly evil. They merely represent nature at its most raw and brutal form. If nothing else, the Sith are brutally honest in what they represent. Now I know what some of you might be thinking. But the Sith use deceit and trickery all the time, and I would say that you are quite correct. But let's not forget that the animal and plant kingdoms also are full of the very same kind of deceit. The Venus flytrap disguises itself as a harmless flower to ensnare its prey much the same way Darth Sidious disguised himself as a noble Grand Chancellor to ensnare the Jedi in his traps. He used powers and abilities taught to him by Darth Plagueis, amplified by the dark side of the Force, to give added advantages in his own arms race against his enemies. But even here it can be said that the Sith are acting in a perfectly natural way. If their enemies are simply not smart enough or strong enough to see through their deceptions, then that simply means that those enemies were never meant to survive past a certain point since they lacked the skills to propel them forward. Much like it's not the fault of a predatory animal if their intended prey are not strong enough to overcome those very set advantages. Many of these philosophies can also be found in the teachings and works of one Friedrich Nietzsche and his fabled Ubermensch. Many of those who study Nietzsche have said that the cultural philosopher introduced a sentiment of thinking known as optimistic fatalism, although I have also heard it called optimistic nihilism, which essentially states that nature has a preset course, but that one has control of how well they travel that very set course. Again, let's examine the way the Jedi perform some of their deceitful tactics, most notably force mental manipulation. Now I could be wrong, but in all my research I could not find a single instance in which a Sith Lord ever used this particular force ability. But again, think of the natural animal kingdom. What predator simply goes up to its prey item and just tells them that they are about to be eaten and that they are not to resist in any way? Now of course this is exaggerated, but you get the point. Sith either use brute force or a form of naturalistic trickery, and the Jedi go about controlling others in a completely unnatural way, or at least a way that would seem to go against the natural order of things. Let's examine the next few lines in the Sith Code. Through strength I gain power, and through power I gain victory. This also can be compared to a simplistic form of capitalism. Now why do conservatives seek strength? Well, not to dominate others, but to accrue more resources for themselves and their loved ones in the forms of generational wealth. This also adheres to Sith teachings. Think of Darth Vader and why he turned to the dark side. He first sought power not as a means to subjugate, but to acquire the resources he needed in order to keep Padme alive. In this case, power is not always seen as something negative. Power equates to wealth, influence, and resources, and in and of itself is not evil. It boils down to the individual and what that said individual does with that power that determines whether it's right or whether it's wrong. Now, we're all familiar with the saying, absolute power corrupts absolutely. However, that's not always the case, at least as far as Star Wars is concerned. Such was the case with the legendary Darth Maul. He was a very powerful Sith Lord and quite strong in the ways of the dark side. But look at his motivations behind acquiring so much power. Even though he was ruthless cold and wouldn't hesitate to kill his subordinates for incompetence, he didn't just kill for the sake of killing. Darth Maul, much like Vader after him, was not a psychopath, but was much more a goal-driven killer. At the end of the day, Maul's sole concern was the survival and continuation of the Sith Empire by any means necessary. Again, a form of natural order boiled down to its most basic of elements. And finally, we have the pinnacle of victory, being completely free in the Force. 
the shackles and chains of conformity broken, elevating the individualistic nature of the Sith. When you really think about it, it is the Sith who are truly the anti-conformists of the Star Wars universe. Go all the way back to the founding of the Sith Order itself. A group of dark Jedi led by Ajunta Paul being exiled and landing on the planet Korriban because they dared to step out of the dogmatic view of their organization using the words of Darth Sidious. And in many ways, he's right. In the Jedi Order, there is simply no room for free expression of thought. Everyone thinks the same, acts the same, leaving no margin for deviation. Where are such actions often carried out in the real world? Well, think of leftist communist countries like China or Stalinist Russia. And it does lead to a very interesting point of controversy. Have you ever noticed the widespread physical diversity of the Jedi Order? They all look different, yet act in almost the exact same way. Not so with the Sith. Now, it's true that most Sith were human, but there were exceptions. Was it because that the Sith catered exclusively to humans? Well, no. It was simply that humans were the most populous species in the galaxy, therefore most Force sensitives were apt to be human, whether they be light or dark. Indeed, one of the most powerful darksiders to ever live was Darth Plagueis the Wise, a member of the Mune species. Now, many would probably raise a seemingly obvious point in that they would cite the glaring scenarios of the formation of the Galactic Empire or the Eternal Empire as examples of Sith's inherent authoritarian nature. However, here's my counter-argument, and remember, this is just my opinion. Many people often use the terms of Sith Lord and Dark Jedi interchangeably, but I put forward that this is wrong. Now, I ask the question, is it possible that once a Sith Lord crosses the line in acquiring power solely for himself as a means to amass resources, to using that power to impose his will on the masses, that in that very moment he ceases to be a Sith Lord and has effectively become a Dark Jedi? Now I don't have much in the way of evidence to back this up and it's merely a, hy a hypothesis, but I thought it was an interesting point and worthy of mention. Now, one final point I'd like to make before I conclude, and it's simply this. The reason that so many Sith are doomed to fail and are incredibly prone to infighting and the like is due to the dark side's greatest weakness, and that's the lack of discipline and or self-restraint. And it's there that I think the biggest difference lies between modern day conservatism and the Sith philosophy. You see, true conservatives in the modern day realize that even though life is effectively a race to the top, they need an equal amount of rational level-headed balance in the form of discipline. This is something that most Sith Lords do not possess in great quantities, with exceptions of course. And it can be said that it might be the Jedi's greatest strength. In fact, it can also be argued that the only true difference between so-called light and dark is that the Jedi exercise too much restraint while the Sith don't have nearly enough. Now, in closing, it may have seemed that I was just ragging on the Jedi in endless criticism, and while it's true that I always find much more in common with the Sith, that doesn't mean that I hold just disdain for the Jedi. In fact, my favorite fictional hero happens to be Luke Skywalker, as to me he represents the very best the Jedi have to offer. He embodies everything that is noble about the Order. He is calm wise, fearless, selfless, and self-assured, while at the same time recognizing that he will always harbor a little bit of his own darkness, but has come to accept that. So tell me down below, do you agree with my assessment about the Sith and how they closely parallel modern day conservative philosophy, or do you think that I'm totally off the mark? What are your own theories and thoughts concerning the ideologies and politics of the Star Wars universe and how they relate to our real world? As always, question everything and trust no one, be it Jedi Master or Sith Lord. Click that like and subscribe button and we'll see you next time.